It really takes a bit of time to absorb the definition of big O, to get used to the idea that it's class of functions, that the constants don't matter. Let's do some examples of what is and is not in big O. Let's, first of all, work in the limit as x goes to zero. Very important to specify that. And let's consider a few examples. Let's start with tangent of x. Tangent of x as x approaches zero lies in big O of x, but not in big O of x squared. What do I mean? Why is that so? Well, is tangent of x less than x, or some constant times x? If we draw the graph, zoom in real close to where x equals zero, yeah, that works. And we can even choose a constant close to one, but who cares? Make that constant like 10 or something like that. All we need is for that inequality to be satisfied. But if we draw a quadratic curve, if we look at x squared, that dips below the tangent line. And we could multiply by 2, or 5, or 10, or 100. It doesn't matter. In the limit, as you get closer and closer to 0, mm -mm, the tangent exceeds that quadratic curve. So that's why tangent is in big O of x, but not big O of x squared. Big O doesn't care about the constants, so if I look at negative 78x cubed, well, that's just a cubic monomial. So it's in big O of x cubed. But it's not in big O of x to the fourth or x to the anything bigger than three, because we're in the limit as x goes to zero. Now here's an interesting one. Consider 5x plus 3x squared. That has some linear growth, some quadratic growth. What does that lie in? It lies in big O of x, but not in big O of x squared. That lower order term. 5x, that dominates the quadratic term 3x squared in the limit as x approaches 0. And you can really see that if you draw the graph. That 3x squared, it hardly matters at all the closer and closer you get to 0. Consider the function x minus sine of x. Knowing what we know about Taylor expansions about 0, we can easily see that this lies in big O of x cubed, but not in big O of x to the fourth. There's definitely a cubic term inside of there that determines what big O it lies in. And finally, let's consider the square root of x. Ooh, that's an interesting one. That does not lie in big O of x, or x squared, or x cubed, or anything else. It does lie in big O of 1. What that means is that it is bounded by some constant. That square root of x, it does go to zero as x approaches zero from the right, but it does so, ooh, it like stays big for a long time and then zoop, goes down to zero. Let's change perspective and consider the case where x is going to infinity. How do things change? Well, consider cosine of x. As x goes to infinity, that thing is wiggling, wiggling, wiggling. That lies in big O of x to the alpha for any value of alpha bigger than or equal to zero. So the limiting case is big O of x to the zero, or big O of one. Cosine is bounded by a constant. But it does not lie in big O of, say, one over x, or x to the alpha, where alpha is strictly negative. Those functions all tend to zero, which cosine does not do. Consider the function square root of x to the fourth plus 1. What does that look like as x is going to infinity? Well, if x is like a million, this is like a million to the fourth plus 1 square root. That plus 1 is really not doing anything for large values of x. So this function really looks like square root of x to the fourth, that is x squared. And indeed, this function lies in big O of x squared. It enacts quadratic growth, but it is not in big O of x. It's definitely got quadratic growth. It would dominate that linear growth. Consider again the function 5x plus 3x squared. What kind of growth do we have now? As x is going to infinity, it's the quadratic term that matters. 
This lies in big O of X squared, but not in big O of X. That's the opposite case to what happens when X goes to zero. Consider the function log of X. We've looked at this guy before. This lies in big O of square root of X. That is the square root of X, that growth, it dominates logarithmic growth. But log of X does not lie in big O of one. That is, there's no constant, no matter how large, that bounds log of X as X is going to infinity. Lastly, let's consider the hyperbolic sine of X and remember its definition in terms of exponential functions. I don't know, there's a one half in there, something, something minus, whatever. Mm, it's no big deal. We can say easily, immediately, that sinh of X lies in big O of E to the X, but not big O of X to the alpha for any value of alpha. Hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, they both have exponential growth. They completely blow past any kind of polynomial growth because exponential dominates polynomial. Okay, these are some examples. You do not have to memorize these, but it would be a good idea to go back and convince yourself that what we have gone over is true and is accurate, and doing so will help solidify the definition of big O for you.